Hey everybody, welcome to our brand new channel, TFL EV. And on this channel, we're going to go in depth with everything electric. We're gonna go through everything that you need to know about every important electric vehicle on the market. And we're going to go super into the weeds about charging and kilowatts and kilowatt hours and everything that electric car and truck people are excited to learn about. Now this is one exciting vehicle to launch the channel. This is the brand new Rivian R1T. It's from a new vehicle manufacturer. It's got a lot of forward thinking inventions. And in this video, we are going over the insane gadgets and gizmos and talking about why the R1T should not only impress electric car enthusiasts, but should probably put traditional vehicle manufacturers on alert because forget the electric component for a second, this pickup truck has a ton of really incredible features that separate it from just about everything else on the market. Now, the entire Rivian experience is meant to be unique, and that experience starts with the key. Now, take a look at the basic key design. It's a little bit unusual. You've got this oval, and on the other end, you've got the Rivian compass. Now, you'll notice that these ovals are pretty much found throughout the vehicle. So take a look at that headlight design. It's mirrored in a lot of different locations. But one cool thing about this, it's actually a clip-on carabiner. So if you're out there going for a hike, maybe going for a climb, stick this on a backpack, stick this on a belt ring, and you're good to go. Now the key itself does have some unique functions. So of course you do have lock and unlock, but one of my favorite initial impressions with the R1T, listen to what happens when you lock the vehicle. It tweets at you. Isn't that amazing? Now I had a great opportunity to meet with one of the founding members of Rivian, employee number four, he came into our offices and gave us a full in-depth tour of the vehicle and answered any questions and gave us a behind the curtain look at the R1T. And I guess that sound, this little tweet, is a mountain bluebird that a engineer recorded at Yellowstone National Park. So there's lots and lots of individual touches in this vehicle that make it so unique. Now, one of, of course, the most iconic features on this key are the tailgate release, but also the front trunk release. So I'm gonna push it twice, and let's see what happens when we take a look under the hood. Now, of course, being a full electric vehicle, you're not gonna pop the hood and find an internal combustion engine with turbochargers or superchargers or fuel injectors or fuel pumps, none of that. Instead, you open up the hood and you find a ginormous front trunk, and it even gets bigger when you fold back that bottom base. And the trunk floor, I don't know if you can see this, is actually secured in place along the bulkhead via magnets, which is very, very cool. Now, inside the front trunk, you'll notice a number of goodies, which we'll dive in depth here with a sec. Uh, this, for example, is the charging cord with level one and level two adapters. This is a gear lock, more on that in a second. And then this is the cover for the trailer hitch, which is one of the highlight features on this vehicle, the towing capacity. But this front trunk is a great idea. Now it is power operated and you can open it with the key. You can also close it with the key or you can do those functions down here. Now, if you locate the center of the vehicle, there's actually a little pad and it would take some time to get used to, but just to the left of center, push the pad and the trunk will glide closed. Now, after talking to the development team, one interesting thing that Rivian has noticed is big flat panel, right? You live in a snowy environment. How is the electric motor gonna compensate with large amounts of snow? Well, there's actually a setting where you can disable the power lift function. So you can actually disconnect this function, just have it pop open and then lift it manually. So if you have a ton of snow, if you live in, a, in an area where you have a ton of snow, that is a great option. Now, let's talk about this front end design. It's pretty wild, pretty out of this world. And Case, I'm gonna have you start with this signature continuous LED light panel that starts on the corners and makes its way along the front of the vehicle, only interrupted by the headlight bezels. An incredible piece of design that really makes this vehicle stand out. Now, if you stay at the front of the vehicle, I'm going to kind of navigate through the different light controls and you can see exactly what the headlight design looks like because it's a little bit unusual. So starting off, we have automatic headlights. And then from there, we've got lights and front fog lights. I don't know if you can see that, but just below the headlights, we also have a, a fog light. There's also a function to go to the parking lights and then turn them off and then check out the high beam. So high beam, super bright, of course, full LED. And Case, if you take a look at the garage door right now, 
One of the cool things about the LED light pattern is you can get really precise signatures so you don't end up blinding people as you drive along. So this is really, really cool and actually a great demonstration. You can see this kink. This over here is a passenger side and then we've got this kind of little dip for the driver side so you don't end up blinding oncoming traffic, which is pretty handy. But that is just the beginning of the lights because when you plug this vehicle in to charge it, it does some really cool stuff. Now, first of all, the charge door is something out of sci-fi. So here you've got these three little streaks by the reflector, push in on the three little streaks and the electric charge port glides open. And it's not just a flap, it's not just a little slider, it's an entire pivot action which opens and closes the charge port. How cool is that? Now what I'm gonna do is grab our office charger here and plug the vehicle in and this is where the lighting signature gets extremely cool. So with the vehicle connected to power, what we should find is the white front light turns green. And now the Rivian is letting you know it's charging. And that same pattern is continued along the back. And we'll see that in a second. Now other cool things in the front of the vehicle. This one does have integrated front recovery points. I think they look quite nice. Um, adventure package on this model. So we do have a 20 inch wheel wrapped in a Pirelli all-terrain tire. Unfortunately, 20 inch wheels are the smallest you can get in this application. I wish you could do like a 17 or an 18. I think that would be better for off-road driving. I do a ton of it regularly. And the smaller the wheel, the chunkier the tire, the better. Now you can get a 20, a 21, and a 22. But the Rivian team was telling me the reason they can't below, go below a 20 are the large brakes, six piston front brakes. And these are the smallest wheels I am told that these brakes will accept. Now coming along the side here, you'll notice exposed door handles. And the door handles do pop in and out depending on the lock status of the vehicle. So you lock the vehicle, everything glides in, unlock it, and everything makes its way out, including the puddle lights, which is pretty cool. Now, fully independent suspension, no body on frame either. So this is a more modern design where it's a unibody incorporating the uh, body structure as the main point of strength. So it's not a cab bolted on top of a body. As such, you don't get a divide here, which is kind of interesting. So there's no divide between the bed and the cab. And that brings me to one of the most revolutionary functions of this vehicle. Because the battery is underneath, because we don't have a traditional solid rear axle with a big V8 in the front and a normal transmission and normal drive shafts, what you get instead is a lot of space for storage. So if you take a look at this button up here on the bedside, push that in, and that brings me to one of the coolest parts of the vehicle, which is the gear tunnel. Now running the entire width of the Rivian is this large storage area. And it is really one of the coolest parts of this truck because you can have a golf bag in there, you can have your groceries, you can have valuables, and then simply close up the gear tunnel, lock the vehicle, and no one is gonna know what's in there and no one can access it because it locks with the vehicle. Other cool thing, this is a nice little platform and you're thinking, well, it'd be cool if I could use this as a step to reach stuff on my roof, and you absolutely can. It's rated up to 250 pounds. So if you had a tent on your roof, if you had accessories, you could jump up on here and grab stuff. There's also an optional kitchen, which slides out of here, a camp kitchen. But I love this. I've never seen this in any other pickup truck ever. And it's a very cool feature. Now closing up the gear tunnel, as we make our way to the bed itself, about a four foot bed. So a pretty small area. It is a composite bed, but it has a bunch of unique features. Now starting out with accessing it. You'll notice on the back, there's no handle, there are no buttons. So how do you get into the bed itself? Well, if you look over here, there's a little icon on the top of the bed, push that in and it glides down. Now, unlike some other trucks on the market, there is no auto up. You do have to manually lift it up, but it is a damped tailgate. And if you get a side profile, something you might notice is just how far the tailgate sticks out kind of an interesting design and that is one of the more unique aspects of the rear end of the Rivian R1T because if I lift up this little expansion panel, unlike most tailgates which will be hinged on the bed support along the side, 
The R1T uses a gooseneck design. I don't know if you can see that in the hinge, but it's actually hinged on a gooseneck. And then there's this little panel that comes down to give you a flat loading area. Now, the advantage of this is you not only have a very unique rear end design where you're not limited by the hinge design of the tailgate, but you also have a much longer usable bed space. So even though the bed length is about four feet with the bed closed, when you open this up, it really expands its usable size. Very smart thinking there, but then it's just the beginning of the bed cleverness. Now, take a look at this little handle right here. Lift this up and the bottom portion of the composite bed glides open. That opens about that far and then you can give it another push and that reveals the spare tire. So the packaging of the Rivian R1T means that this has four electric motors, two in the front, two in the rear. So they couldn't place the spare tire underneath, but don't fret too much because this is still a matching full size spare tire, which is incredibly important for off-road use. Super glad they have incorporated that. And this is a nice little tidbit of info. See this? That right there is the Rivian logo. And when you get mildew and frost on, your truck bed in the morning that'll actually shine through in the frost which is pretty cool but that once again is not even the coolest part of the bed integrated lights by the fender wells here and an air compressor check this out so i lift up this panel i see this little illuminated section this is an air compressor which will go up to 150 psi the cable is located in the little gear tunnel in its little cubby and then you push and start it Air comes streaming out, and then when it hits the set PSI, it will actually disengage and turn off, which is very cool. So very potentially useful, and we'll be sure to do more testing on that here in the near future. Also useful over here, not one, but two three-prong 120 volt outlets. The total outlet rating on this truck, there's one of these in the gear tunnel too, is 1500 watts. So like the new Tundra has this feature, but it's only 400 watts in this vehicle. 1500 so not quite the f-150 right which is 7200 in the hybrid but still more usable and then ready for one of the coolest features something very unusual from a factory built truck push this button it has a power actuated tonneau cover so they wanted this to be super usable if you live in a city if you want to keep stuff in your bed close the tonneau cover lock the truck and people aren't gonna be able to get into that storage area. Now, what about the capacities? And let's take a look over here by the VIN panel. So, of course, it is a five-seater, three in the front, two in the back. And if we look down here on the little GVWR sticker, we see that comes in at 8,532 pounds. And the payload capacity is just under 1,800 pounds, which is really pretty good. Um, so, Rivian R1T right around 1,700 pounds of total capacity. So Case, I'm going to have you hop in, passenger side, and we'll start talking about some of the cool features. The MSRP on this truck comes in at right around $78,000. They start in the high $60,000 range and you really do get a very premium interior with a bunch of unique aspects. So first of all, almost a completely flat load floor. One of the benefits of having an EV, um, a flat battery, right? You don't have intrusions from drive shafts, especially with this model with the four electric motors, powertrains are on the front and the back, flat floor. And then, I think that this is a really neat idea. Just take a look down here, pull this out. This is a Bluetooth speaker. And it's quite a chunky Bluetooth speaker. It's branded Rivian with the Rivian compass. And I love this idea because it's hidden, it's out of sight, it's got little plugs on the bottom here. So when you go ahead and insert it in its cubby, it's charged up and ready to go for those tailgates. Very minimalist interior. And I do mean an extremely minimalist interior. So if we look, for example, at the central screen here, um, it's got about a 16 and a half inch display, but no knobs, no buttons to be found. If you want to increase the volume, you've got a little slider here. Slide that up, increase the volume, slide it down to decrease. Rivian worked with Meridian, by the way, for their premium sound system. Luckily, if you don't like it doing it that way, here in the steering wheel, you do have a little slider control. The air vents are extremely unique in this vehicle. You go to the climate panel, and then rather than manipulating them with a little slider, you actually do it via these little 
um, basically toggles on the screen, which is super, super unique. And then, of course, you also have um, settings down here for heated seats. And then what they told me is that it'll default to whatever you leave it to. So, for example, if it's wintertime, your shortcut will be a heated seat. If it's summertime and you're using the, um, the cooled seat more, that's what's going to be displayed permanently on the bottom. So you can kind of toggle between those two. It's kind of unique. Now, beyond the climate screen, lots of other cool stuff. You do have the capability to navigate to destinations well beyond its over 300 mile range. So if I wanted to go to LA, I can plug that into the navigation system and it will tell me where to stop and how long to stop. You also have several different drive modes ranging from all purpose to sport. There is a conserve setting, an off-road setting and a towing. The vehicle is currently plugged in, which is why it's not letting me toggle between the different modes. And then over here, the ride height setting. So you've got a ride height max of 11 and a half inches, but then there's low, lowest standard high and max there as well. Now, if we look at some of the truck settings, some stuff going on here, we've got all the vehicle controls, lock, unlock, we can turn on the bed lights, we can open up the gear tunnels, we can open up the tonneau, we can lower the tailgate all in this screen. Lots of light controls there. So for example, let's go to day, that's all gonna turn um, bright, maybe a little bit easier to see. Night mode there. And then over here on this screen, are the charging. So you can see we are currently sitting at an estimated 165 miles of range. On the right, you can set a charging limit for daily, for best battery health, it'll stop at 70%. Extend will go to 85%. And then trips for longer trips, you can fill up to 100. Of course, the idea is the higher the percentage, the more potential damage you'll do to the battery in the long run. Over here, you can kind of change the units from kilo uh, miles per hour of charging speed to kilowatts. You can also take a look at when it'll be done charging. It'll give you the estimate. And then down here, this is how you turn on, for example, your bed outlets, and then you can set a max um, amperage on those outlets as well, which is very cool. Here we see all of our information, our odometer, our battery. This is a launch edition. It tells you the color, tells you the interior, um, tells you the wheels, and then of course, our built-in owner's manual there. Now the central screen, not a huge amount we can do right off the bat. So it does tell you, for example, right now we are charging. It'll tell us when we're done. We can also see efficiency over here on the left. And then also our navigation will be displayed in here. The drive selector, no power button, put your foot on the brake, pull down to shift in the gear. Of course, we're still plugged in, so it's not going to let me do that. And then on the left stock, we've got light controls and mirrors, pretty standard stuff. Now up top, big glass panoramic roof looks fantastic and it's UV um, insulated as well. So we're not gonna see a ton of, uh, in theory, not a lot of heat that will gain in the passenger compartment. If we take a look at the back seat, we do have separate rear climate panels. I love the seat design with these little hooks. I think that looks truly phenomenal, very cool design. And then the seat bottoms do lift up as well for some additional under seat storage. And then on the passenger side, this is where your subwoofer lives. So quick tour of the interior there. Now what I am most impressed with when it comes to hands-on with the Rivian R1T is the build quality. Now I was very fortunate to um, live with and experience some of the very early Teslas like the Roadster. And let me tell you what, those felt very homemade, very kit car-like. They were based on a Lotus. The infotainment system didn't work very well. It was just very cobbled together. But if you look at this, this, by the way, is not a marketing unit. This is a current customer vehicle. All of the panel gaps feel very good, actually. The interior quality, everything feels nice and tight. The door close, nice solid thunk when you give it a close. So for a brand new company with a brand new facility to them, um, you know, manufacturing for the first time a ground up platform, very impressed with the quality. Now, of course, they do have tens of thousands of pre-orders, so getting your hands on one of these could be quite tricky. And that, of course, is something that they are struggling with getting these out the door. But I mean, it's very amazing to me, not only from like an electric standpoint, it's got roughly 135 kilowatt hours worth of um, lithium ion battery. It's got over 300 miles of range. It's got a peak charge rate of 200 kilowatts. That's all good stuff. But the fact that they can just do this the first try with decent payload over 10,000 pounds of towing capacity, in this case, 11,000 pounds, and are able to build it and sell it right off the bat is pretty incredible. And that should make Ford GM and all those a little bit nervous. Because I know it's probably going to get some criticism from the truck folks that, yes, it's not really a full-size truck competitor. It's more of a mid-size, full-size combo. 
It maybe has some unconventional um, infotainment compared to a typical truck. It doesn't have like a volume knob, but I think it's an amazing piece of gadgetry, technology, and excitement. And I'm really stoked to get this vehicle for a test here in Colorado. We have it for a week. We're going to run it through off-road testing. Andre's going to put it on the Icon, which is our signature towing test. We're going to hook it up to a trailer, hit max weight, and see how the Rivian performs in the real world doing not only EV stuff, but truck stuff. Let me know what you think of the R1T in the comments section below. This has been Tommy with the Fastlane truck, the Fastlane car, and now TFL EV. Stay tuned for a lot more in-depth electric vehicle coverage.